the sound in my mind that I wanted for the group to sing. And it, it called for a contralto that had a, a tone, of, a voice pitch about a tone and a half or two tones higher than Cass's. Uh, and so Cass would follow us around and we'd sing on the stage and she would get a job as a waitress in the club and she'd start singing from the, <laughs> from the tables, you know. She would sing harmony parts, make up harmony parts. And she was always just so hilarious. I mean, we didn't even know she had a job sometimes. You know, she'd show up like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and she'd be like waiting the tables. And we were working in the Virgin Islands at Duffy's on Creek Alley, one of the songs we wrote, as a matter of fact, about our experiences down there. And they were doing some construction work. And, uh, um, well, you've heard lead pipe cinch. <laughs> well, this was the lead pipe cinch of all time. It's uh, actually a lead pipe about mm, like this long, like a pipe bomb kind of pipe sort of fell down and uh, cracked Cass on the head from about 15 feet above, and she'd lost consciousness for, oh, I think, three or four minutes, I suppose, at least. And the paramedics came by and took her to the local hospital. And she came home two days later, and she could sing two tones higher. <laughs> and she sort of loosened something up in there. I'm not sure how it happened. And I don't suggest it as a thing to do for people who want to raise the tone of their voices. After Cass came out of the hospital, we were singing in the house. and. Uh, we had this big, dramatic, uh, wide-open chord, full-voiced chord, four-part harmony, and the house started, like, and, like, things started shaking. I mean, the glasses didn't break, like you see in movies and things, but things were, like, rattling, you know? It was like poltergeist. And uh, Denny said around and said, what the hell was that? You know? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, let's try it again, hear it again, and everything started shaking again. And from that moment on, I knew we really had a sound that uh, the tape could really capture. Barry came by in his new motorcycle from his brand new number one record, you know, with his leather boots and his big Australian hat and all these things. And uh, he said, you guys should come down and sing for, for my producer, uh, Lou Adler. I think he might like what you're doing. So we went down that night, and we were with, like, ragamuffins. Like, really, the, we'd, I weighed about 120 pounds, I guess. I was always skinny as a beanpole. And Denny... Uh, Denny looked sort of like a John, John Lennon, John Barrymore look-alike with his profile and everything. And the cast was gigantic, and Michelle looked like, you know, the archetypal flower child that hadn't even happened yet. You know, but she was the California girl that Brian Wilson was singing about, which they all could be by now. And uh, so Lou said, well, sing a couple of the songs. And so we, we sang the entire first album, which I'd already written, and we'd already rehearsed, and I just had my 12-string guitar, and we just sang it sort of a cappella with one guitar, all the harmonies and things. And uh, Lou just, his eyes got like this, you know, the room was rattling. I was in college at the time. I was uh, living in New York City. And uh, suddenly there was this group that really had this, this magic that combined East Coast folk music with West Coast pop music. And it was obviously a magic combination because they had a string of hit records and became a... Uh, uh, in the forefront of pop music for the, the entire length of the last half of the 60s. It was sort of the mixture of the uh, political and social climate of the times and uh, all the repression that all of us had felt through the 50s and the early 60s and the disillusionment uh, with the, the assassinations of people that we really respected and admired. It really bothered you, those events? Really, really bothered, bothered really bothered us. We were very deeply into folk music and into American folk history and uh, it was just absolutely upsetting. Take a song like California Dreamin'. That song's not about going to the drive-in with your girlfriend. It's not about, you know, the prom or the hop or this or that. It's about, you know, youth's quest for, you know, new frontiers. LSD yeah. was not illegal. It was a, a legal substance. It wasn't considered even to be a drug in, in that sense, you know? It was mold. And uh, under the influence of LSD, the first time we were able to find LSD, we just found it. And uh, we just started taking it. It's a daily thing. We thought everyone was.